Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. I have more Priest videos on the channel than I think any other class, but it's been like over three weeks since I've done... Well, not over three weeks, but almost three weeks since I've done a Priest run, so we'll keep the imbalance going. I've been doing a pretty good job of keeping the classes balanced lately, so I don't mind uh, having a few imbalances left over. This is an easy call here. The Violet Teacher has a great body and a good ability. And Shadow Word Death is nice to have one of in the deck, maybe two. It's a tough call here. Ooh, Holy Fire versus the Defender of Argus. Nerfed Defender of Argus, no less. Well, Holy Fire is uh, removal and healing. It's expensive, though. I'd rather have something that helps me get ahead than something that helps when I'm already ahead. So I'll take the Defender of Argus for that purpose. Oh, wow. Shattered Sun Cleric. I haven't seen you in a long time. This is a premier pack. Everything is good here. You know, ah, uh, man, it's tough. It's it's tough. I mean, I'm going to take the Temple Enforcer just because I want to make sure I have some endgame. It's kind of how priests roll. You need some good endgame stuff to, to really do well. So let's take the Temple Enforcer, but I think any one of those would have been a fine pick. Okay, I don't want to take a second Shadow Word Death this early. These are not the greatest creatures, but uh, the Panther's been alright, and we haven't gotten any 3-drops yet, so let's start our creature collection here. Okay, um, Solar Hand Knight is a 5-drop, and I have none of those, but I'm going to take the Flesh Eating Ghoul. It's a very high impact 3-drop, exactly what I want to have. This sucks. This sucks a load of dongs. I could take a War Golem. It's so early in the draft, though, I don't want to commit a deck spot to such a bad endgame card. We'll take a Torn Warrior. Now I have a few too many 3-drops. Guess here's a 5-drop. And okay. I'm going to take a Worgen Infiltrator. Let's get one good 1-drop in the deck so that we can uh, slow the opponent down in some cases. Wow, this is a really premier rare pack. Every single one of these is top-notch. Oh, man. Shadow Madness can sometimes be a 2-for-1. Sometimes you can do cool things with it. Like, uh, my favorite play of all time was when I Shadow madness somebody's Acolyte of Pain when I had a Wild Pyromancer on the board. So the Wild Pyromancer triggered when the Acolyte was on my side. I drew a card. I ran the Acolyte in and drew another card. Uh, it was good times. Um, I'm going to take a Sunwalker, though. I find more and more often nowadays we're heading into turn 6. The only thing that's on my mind is, please don't play a big creature. And it just seems like sometimes you'll win the game by dropping something really big down, so I'll take the Sunwalker there. Okay, since I drafted some 6-drops pretty aggressively, I don't think I need this Temple Enforcer here. I will take a Stormwind Knight over the 2-drop. I really only have one actual 4-drop. The Defender of Argus doesn't exactly count. You often don't play it on turn 4. And this guy's super great. He's kind of like removal as well. Okay, well, um, the Sun Fury Protector is a 2-drop, and I could use some of those. I'm going to take Argent Commander, though. It's just so good. Okay, so now we've really got to get some two drops. But first, Shadow Word Pain. Very important card. And... I, um, boy. Well, I've got three three drops and two four drops. So I guess we'll take another Stormwind Knight. I like having good four drops. Oh, perfect. Amani Berserker, best two drop in the game. What a great way to start our two drop collection. This all is terrible. Well, it's not terrible. I don't. It doesn't really fit me. Take the mechanic there. I don't want to take Mad Bomber. Well, I've got a Defender of Argus. That's the only buffing card I have. As I like to say, bad buffs are better than no buffs. And as my friend Dan pointed out to me in our tag team video, that is contradictory to my philosophy of taking empty board cards. What can I say, though? Um, so I could take another Stranglethorn Tiger. It's a bit more aggressive than I'd like. It's good for finishing off the opponent. It's not good for, like, establishing... I mean, it's okay, but it's not great for establishing board domination. Simply because a 5-5 five, five for 5 is... It's not quite as good for just controlling the board as a 4-6 for 5 would be. We'll take a raid leader and just hope I can get some 2-drops later on. That's becoming my number one priority. All right, so I could take a light spawn here. Uh, what's the situation? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 drops, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 drops. So we'll take a light spawn because it's more powerful rather than the Shattered Sun Cleric. Uh, Holy Nova, it's good to have one of those, definitely. And um, Mind Games is nifty, but I think Cabal Shadow Priest. I've been wrecked by this card on more than one occasion. It's just so good. Uh, take a second Holy Nova over MVP Nightblade. Okay, now now I need two drops. I, I will take every two drop I see. There's the Loot Hoarder. Excellent. No two drops here. Take a Razorfin Hunter. Still no two drops. I'll take a Thought Steal over the Ventrico. I think I've got I think I've got a good amount of End Game. Well, got five biggish creatures. Yeah, we'll take a thought steal for some card draw and some 
some fun shenanigans. Still no two drops. I guess we're taking a flesh eating ghoul. All right, Morlock Tidehunter, just take it. Ah, Northshire Cleric, perfect. Could use one of those in the deck. Now, will I take a third flesh eating ghoul or a mad bomber? Th this is this is the test right here because of course in the abstract, I mean I wouldn't even see this mad bomber. I would take a flesh eating ghoul, but let's do a quick check. I have two one drops. I've got one, two, three, two drops. I've got five creatures that I can play in the first couple of turns. And as a priest, I mean, you do kind of want to play things in the first couple of turns, or else, you know, you're just healing yourself and it does nothing. The Flesh Eating Ghoul, I've got two of them, but I already have so many three drops. Three drops, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I have to take the Mad Bummer for curve reasons. I, I feel horrible doing that. Oh my god, what's with the Flesh Eating Ghouls? But well, we'll take a Fairy Dragon. Okay. And then, of course, at the end, they kind of come in droves. Well, we'll take a Holy Fire here. We passed it in the beginning. We'll take it now. So this deck turned out okay. I, th I think I think I'll make it to four wins with this deck. Priest is my most consistent class in, like, 20 runs or something in my spreadsheet. I've made it to six or more 80% of the time. It's, like, pretty crazy. I've only made it below six wins four times with Priest. So, I mean, it has happened. But, um, have I ever made it below four with Priest? Like, have I ever had a really bad Priest run? I'm not sure, actually. ACO the Hunter. Seems like a familiar name, but I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so here we go. Two drop helping us out here. Get a, getting an early start. Holy Nova. I've There have been times when I've regretted mulliganing it, but in general, I'm not going to keep that around. I'd, li I'd rather have creatures to play. And I do have a lot of three drops in this deck. Thankfully, I didn't get any of them. Got a removal spell that's not going to matter till like, turn six. Ah, uh, there we go. That's better. Shadow Word Pain, that could be really good. And, of course, the Fairy Dragon. So, really, I have a couple of chances, about two top decks, to try to get a three-mana card, which, you know, I have in this deck. Uh, so, I get a four-mana card here. The idea of Lightspawn being buffed by Temple Enforcer is a bit of a distant hope. There's a long time that's going to pass between this being dropped and that. Oh, my God. If this Mad Bomber... Oh, my God. If this Mad Bomber... Oof. If that Mad Bomber had killed my creature, I would have been very upset. Ah, Torin Warrior. Well, I could Shadow Word Pain and kill this, or I could play Torin Warrior. And you know what? Honestly, Shadow Word Pain is more valuable than Fairy Dragon. Now, am I going to get cheeky here? No, because he still has the coin, so he could coin out a multi-shot if I leave this alone. So we're going to do this, and we're going to pass the turn. Okay, this is actually looking okay, because I can now drop a Light Spawn. And unless he plays something that will kill the Torn Warrior, which is definitely possible, uh, the Light Spawn, um, and, and, and it has the Light Spawn die to a deadly shot, I should be fine. Okay, so this is a nice combo for him. He gets a heal. However, I don't think I mind too much. We're going to do this, and my guy gets enraged, which means it'll trade with the Ooze, and we get to drop a Light Spawn now. All right, this is looking, this is looking all right. So, of course, you can trade the Ooze, and then deadly shot will kill the Light Spawn. However, if he does that... Well, that sucks, because then all I'm doing is healing myself and playing a raid leader next turn. That's a bit sad. Hopefully I'll get, like, a Stranglethorn Tiger or something. Oh, he's going to silence it. Um, that's bad. I never did take any Inner Fire. My opponent doesn't know that I don't have Inner Fire, of course. But it does mean for me that uh, this thing is completely useless. There is, I mean, Defender of Argus could give it Taunt or something, but, uh, wow. Uh, the raid leader. Yeah, I'm going to play it. I really don't see much else to do here. We'll heal this thing up, I suppose. So the Raid Leader, I'm trying to trade it into the Spellbreaker. Wow, that, that him having a silence there, that really sucks. I'm going to get a 6-6, six, six, though, which is cool. Oh, jeez, he has the perfect answer to it. Just picture perfect. God damn. All right, well, um, let's actually drop a Sunwalker. So my thinking here is that... I'm a little bit safe against a deadly shot. It would be a coin flip for him. Deadly shot's what you're really afraid of when you play Sunwalker, because I got this Light's Pun. Um, and then he can't attack it with his creatures, because of course this has Taunt. Oh, he could just play his own Sunwalker. So this dodges both Shadow Word Pain and Death, so that's exactly what I was hoping for. Uh... Well, what I could do is Holy Nova to kill these two, pop the Divine Shield... I won't kill it, but I can run in and get it down to one health. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to have to do. I don't really see many other... I mean, I could play a Temple Enforcer, but I don't like leaving this stuff alive. So let's just Holy Nova here. That seems like a pretty good use of it. And now, do I run in or do I let him run in? 
I think actually, ah, oh man, that's tough. There are pros and cons to both. If I run in and he has a buff, he'll be able to kill mine. As it is now, if he has a buff, he won't kill my thing. But if he has a deadly shot and takes the chance, and I don't use this divine shield, I'll be sad. Well, I gotta take a risk somehow, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then let him decide what he wants to do. Hopefully, I'll get a defender of Argus and be able to buff this. Or he plays like a raid leader or something, buffs this, and then Shadow or Death will kill it. Okay, that's actually, that validates my play completely. Because if I had run in with my um, Sunwalker, then my Sunwalker would now be dead. Instead, I get to use Shadow or Death now. So what do I target with it? Well, I think the Stormwind Champion makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to kill the Stormwind Champion. This thing's power drops. I kill it now. Now, do I heal myself or play the Dragonling mechanic? I think I'm going to heal this to get around Arcane Shot and then content myself with an Amani Berserker. I put that in the wrong place. I should have put the Light Spawn in the middle. That was a bit of an error against Explosive Shot. Well, I guess if he Explosive Shots this, my, my Berserker gets enraged. He might not want to do that. I assume he has some kind of a backup plan. Normally, he wouldn't put a Novice Engineer out for a, an opponent's Berserker to just chomp on. Okay, so there's a high main. That's unfortunate. Um... Yes, we will do a North Shark Cleric and draw a card. Pilot Teacher, that's cute. Well, I think I'm going to drop a temp Temple Enforcer here. So, we'll do this. And I'm going to just ignore that Savannah High Main and swing for 4 damage. So, now we actually have quite a lot of power on the field here. We've accumulated creatures over time. I mean, this is 15 power here. Oh, please don't be a charging pig. Oh, that's that's actually fine. I don't care about the one buff because it doesn't let him kill the Sunwalker yet. Unless he has like a Defender or a Shattered Sun Cleric or some kind of a buff. I don't mind this at all. That I don't care about. And that I don't care about because I have a chance to deal with it. It's going to run in. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Well, let's take a look at the situation. We have 6, 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16 damage. Not enough to kill the opponent, though. Not that thrilled about killing the high main, giving him two hyenas, and I'm not that thrilled about this Emperor Cobra, either. Hmm. Boy, that's tough. Well, let's begin by drawing a card. That seems like a good move. Stormwind Knight changes pretty much nothing. These things all have a lot of health. I could play the Mad Bomber. Oh, man. I mean, if it hits this twice, that would suck. But really, that shouldn't happen. Um, okay. Let's do Shadow Word Pain to kill the Cobra. I'm not 100% certain I'm making the right play here. Let's do a Mad Bomber. See what it hits. See if I can get lucky and hit the High Main. Wow, really? That was slightly improbable. Okay, we'll do Stormwind Knight then. And, um... Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, boy. Let's... Let's do... Oh, jeez. Okay, well, that's fine. It's weird how sometimes people will concede when you're just, like, thinking. I didn't have the kill. I was still, like, uh, we counted, like, sev seven points away from killing him. Anyway, uh, that was a bit of a weird game. I think I probably had it. I, I, I was gonna, I think, kill the Leox so that the Harvest Golem didn't have enough power to kill my Sunwalker and then attack with everything else. So, like, I would have attacked with, I think, the North Shark Cleric and the Stormwind Knight into the Leox, killing it, and then put, like, 10 damage on him with, or 15 damage on him with my other creatures. Wait, I miscounted. I had 10, 15, 16... Oh, I had 18 damage, right. 18. Pazuzu. Okay. Good thing I got a 2-drop in my draft. Woot, woot. Send that 5-drop back. Oh, wow. We have the first player curve here. Now, this, for once, I have a real curve. It seems like every time I have, like, a 2, 3, 4 curve, I'm always like, well, it's a, it's a fake curve here. But no, this is a real curve. You can really totally play 2, 3, choice 4. I hope he passes on turn one. Fuck you! Ah, uh, damn, man. Turn one plays make a huge difference. 
huge ass difference. Now, please don't just just don't play an Argent Protector, okay? You know, it's so unoriginal is the thing. Like every paladin ever plays an Argent Protector on turn two, kills the opponent's creature. Come on, man. Let's make a stand for originality, all right? Do something new. Do you fucker? Oh, come on! Ah, oh, chase us, ball sacks. Well, that notice how huge of, of a difference that made. Him having a play on turn one, it made him kill my creature on turn two. God damn it! Honest to God, Jesus. Well, okay, so he's gonna sacrifice a creature. Sacrifice two creatures. I think he made a mistake. He should have attacked me with the Berserker first, because the Protector was going to die anyway. Ha! <laughs> Whoops! Well, that's interesting here is that now the Light Spawn actually dies to the Golem. So does the Storm of Night, and doesn't quite have enough pull to kill it. And my own Golem, my old, sorry, Ghoul, not Golem. My own Ghoul dies as well. This might be the play, because these two things can kill it. But we'll just play the Light Spawn. I think it's a 4-drop. Trading for a 3-drop is, you know, not the end of the world. It's regrettable, but things, worse things have definitely happened. Okay, he's just going to take the trade. Play a Grunt. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so I'll kill the Grunt with my Stormwind Knight next turn. Almost certainly. Uh, maybe something wacky will happen. That will make me change my mind. Uh, nope. Okay, let's do this. And do that. And hope he doesn't have Blessing of Kings. <laughs> a frequent hope of mine against Paladins. Who are able to get a creature to stick against me. So next turn I'd probably play two of my three drops. Don't you even! Oh well, uh, that's not as bad as... Well, it's, it actually kind of is bad. So he has a 4-4 four, four instead of a... Yeah, this is actually just about as bad as Blessing of Kings would have been. Crap. Well, the Dark Iron Dwarf just owns whatever I want to play. Uh, okay, we're going to Thought Steal then. This was terrible. That... Ugh. Well, you can't always get good thought steals. Hey, that's another that's another proverb for the books. You can't always get good thought steals. Man, he had to have the Argent Protector. That's that's rough, folks. That's just rough. Rough a doodle do, poodle poopity poo. Oh man, talk about adding insult to injury. What? Who plays with this card? Okay, Holy Nova. Just, just give me a Holy Nova here. Nope. <laughs> All right. Fuck everything. Let's play a Mad Bomber. Come on, Mad Bomber. Be good to me. Be good to me. Okay, that was pretty good. He killed the recruit. I'll take it. And do 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 boo. I think this actually is pretty good. And you know what? This ghoul is never gonna do anything good. I might as well just play it. Force him to kill it. Okay, I'm, I'm in there. I'm hanging in there. It could still it could still work. He can kill my ghoul with his dwarf, and he can kill my bomber. No! Oh, no! Boo! 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 Oh, he's had everything! He has had... No! You suck! God damn it. Well, this is why you don't let paladins keep creatures. I, I didn't have a choice, by the way, folks. I had no choice. There was no way that I could have stopped any of this. I, I did my absolute best. It's just he God Oh man. It's just always had what he needed. Now luckily I get to draw a card there. Please just don't have any buffs. Don't have any one attack buffs. Please let my North Shire Cleric live. Heal this, draw a card. No, no, no. Hammer of Wrath. Okay, so he's getting card advantage with these hammers, it is worth noting. Uh <laughs> Okay, so he spent his whole turn doing that, but notice he's got like six cards now to my four. This is a bit disgusting. Okay, well, luckily for me, I get to play the Nomish Inventor draw a card. Give me a three drop. Panther? Fair enough. That's good enough. We'll do this, and we'll do this. So, I got some card draw myself from the Nomish Inventor, and then from the Loot Hoarder dying against the Argent Protector, I'll get a few cards back. This is quite the pitched battle. It's not over yet, Pazuzu. You use your ooh sounds in different ways. No! Oh, no! Oh, no. That's... See, this is what I'm talking about, folks. This is what I'm talking about. Like, it... Uh, I just don't have many answers to this. I need, like, like holy fire or something. My Defender of Argus. Okay. Oh, you know what? That... Mm, well, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and do a Holy Nova. Pop Divine Shield, kill two of his creatures. And... Either Defender of Argus or Raid Leader. Well... Raid Leader leaves me with two mana to spare, but I, all I can do is heal, which is not that useful. 
when all else is equal, do the move that spends more of your mana. So we'll do this. Swing. And swing. Okay. Okay. He's got five cards to my four soon to be five. I don't have any more cards in the works, but I have the board advantage. Okay. I don't have the board advantage anymore. My board advantage is gone. Oh, my board advantage is... It's like it never existed. Oh, well... It was good while it lasted. Okay. Okay. We're going to fish out the Noble Sacrifice, I think, with the Defender against the Squire. It is, of course, Noble Sacrifice because, of course, it is. Get down, get down, get down tonight. We're going to play Raid Leader. Kill that bitch. Is there any point in healing this? Yes, because I can't play my two creatures anyway. It stops the Squire from getting the kill. I'm gonna play that. Unfortunately, now the Yeti can kill my Gnomish Inventor, and then the Squire can kill my Raid Leader. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, he has remo like another Hammer of Wrath or a True Silver Champion for this, or a Consecration and just wins the game. If he can kill this with a card that he has, like Argent Commander or anything, then he just runs rampant through all my stuff. Uh, well, that's not the worst that it could have been. At least I still get to keep the card, but it's, it's really terrible for me. So now the Yeti can kill whatever it wants. He chooses that, which is smart. Everything here deals two power, so the Yeti's still kind of good, you know? Ah. Now, this is a bit misleading because I have drawn two extra cards with Thought Steal, so I've actually drawn more cards than he has. That was an amazing top deck, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to kill off the Yeti. And we're just going to clear out the board, honestly. This is actually the right move. My other stuff is all dying, so I might as well put less damage on the Gnomish Inventor. Okay, I've got the board advantage. We're in a top deck war. His hero ability is better than mine because I keep having to take damage killing his reinforcements, but if I can draw a couple of spells, Violet Teacher could make up for that. Oh, that sucks because now my Gnomish Inventor dies for free, so he gets caught up. And then the Kotal will kill my Argent Commander. That was a really good top deck. Sunwalker! Oh, he shoots, he scores! Ah, that's so good. The difference between four health, or excuse me, two health and one health is pretty immaterial. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna heal him. I mean, I'm, I'm wasting a point of healing either way. Might as well put it on him so I can kill another recruit later. This guy will be my designated minion sweeper. Okay, that's Sunwalker. Man, I am glad I took that Sunwalker because boy was, has it been pretty good for me in both games so far. This was really unfortunate because uh, th this thing like can like it, it, two four is not irrelevant right now, and I've used both of my buffs. I think I still have a Shattered Sun Cleric in here, don't I? I think I do. Oh, he's gonna heal it. What a bitch. Ugh. Okay. We can still do this. Holy Nova. More like holy. This sucks. Well, okay. So because I have Holy Nova, I can do. Uh, I can't I can't quite do it. No matter what this runs into, it dies, except for the Recruit. And, of course, the Recruit will die to the Holy Nova anyway. Can I kill him? 10, 14, 16? No, I need to kill his stuff, I think. I think it would be too risky not to. Question is, how? Well, this is the thing that hits the weakest. So we're going to do this. This. That, play Holy Nova, get a 1-1, kill off most of his stuff, and I will heal my Taunter. I'm past the turn. Okay, so I'm, I'm in the lead here. I've got four cards to his three, okay, four if you counter Recruit, but I'm about to get my fifth. So I'm in the lead. I have a life advantage and a board advantage and a card advantage, but it could still go badly depending on how good his cards are. Blessing of Might. Okay, so he gets to kill my Tantra, but at least it's a he's two for one in here. So that's fine. I'm okay with this. Oh, does he have nothing to do with this last card? Is it like something stupid? It's something stupid, and look at that, my aggro tiger does me good. Okay, we'll do that. Do that. Swing. Swing. And now we are threatening the kill. 
Wow. Well, after all that whining, I guess my cards were better than his. I thought his he had, like, amazing draws all game, but I guess... You know, that Sunwalker really did it for me. Yeah, that's un he just didn't have an answer to the Sunwalker. So, he lost. I think that was a very good draft pick. And it might actually explain why I had a pretty bad... I had, like, a pretty bad drought a while back uh, in Hearthstone. I didn't do very well. And there was, like, an era when I wasn't really valuing Sunwalker very highly. I think I need to reverse myself here. Maybe, I mean, those were different times. There were more mages running around with polymorphs than they are than there are now. But yeah, this is a really strong card. I think it pretty much won me both of those games. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please like and or subscribe, and I'll be back soon with the rest of the videos. I'll see you in a bit.